credit card debt, highest it's ever been. You know what's the craziest thing about uh, uh, credit card debt being, being the highest it's ever been? Tam, the average interest rate on credit card is the highest it's ever been. Jesus. Forget about the debt. So people are worried about the debt. So imagine the interest rates in the last five years has gone like this to 23%. Or the average is 23% on credit card. You know what 23% means. That means the debt doubles about two and a half years. That's like loan shark. Th numbers. That's loan shark. Three years, your debt is doubling, right? But that's what we got right now on credit cards. The uh, forgiveness for your uh, loan, uh, school loan, loan is gone. So now you have to start paying for it. Uh, go to the corporations you were talking about that are borrowing money. This year, their interest payment on corporation that borrowed money is going to end up being around $530 billion. Just interest, car payments, and subprime. They're seeing a spike in defaults where people are not making car payments. Let's go to the next one. That's the scariest one. U.S., has $33 trillion of debt, worse it's ever been, the highest it's ever been. These signs identified by Patrick Bet David hint at an approaching economic disaster. It seems we've been overlooking these warnings for quite a while, and now it might be too late. The U.S. could be on the brink of a recession influenced by a cocktail of global instabilities. For example, political unrest in the Middle East can disrupt oil supplies, leading to higher energy prices and inflation. China's rising dominance in global markets can affect U.S. exports and trade balance. Even whispers of World War III can cause global economic uncertainty, leading to capital flight from the U.S. What will be the straw that breaks the camel's back? If the thought of these uncertainties has you worried about your financial future, you're in the right place. In today's video, we'll dive deep into Patrick Bet David's analysis of the current state of the U.S. economy and the looming threats overhead. But here's a silver lining, cryptocurrency. Yes, I'll also discuss how diving into the crypto world could be a financial lifesaver if the U.S. economy takes a nosedive. So, are you curious to know more? Keep watching till the end of the video to learn more. Don't miss out on our latest insights. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon. Ready to discover how you can secure your capital? Let's dive right in. First, let's discuss the threats looming over our heads, trying to push the U.S. into an economic recession. The upcoming presidential election, a blessing or a curse? Because in America, you, you can't put a 20-year plan in place. There is no such thing as a 20-year plan in America. Because whoever's the next guy that's going to come take your job is going to say, no, we're not building that wall. No, we're not going to do that. No, we're going to cut those benefits. No, we're going to add these benefits. The 2024 presidential elections. It's that time again every four years like clockwork when the political arena turns into a bit of a circus. Now, you might be wondering, how could presidential elections be bad for the economy? Well, it's all about inconsistency. Imagine trying to follow a recipe, but halfway through, someone keeps changing the ingredients. That's kind of what happens to our economy with each election. Every new president brings their own economic agenda, tossing out old plans before they even have a chance to put on a show. This constant flip-flopping makes it tough for any long-term economic strategies to truly take hold, leaving businesses and consumers in a state of uncertainty. Now, no doubt, it is also a safeguard against the risks of a prolonged single authority which could lead us down an even rockier path. But a lack of harmony and unity is definitely one of the reasons the U.S. is heading toward a recession. China is taking over the global market. And what's going on with a lot of these properties that they build out in cities that looks like just like Paris. I don't know if you've seen the city they build in China. It's a city. Everything Paris has, it has. Hmm. It looks identical to Paris. If you Google the same this kind of architecture, China's rising dominance in the global market is a threat to the U.S. economy. For example, look at this chart. China is clearly not just playing the game, it's setting the rules. China's gross production now accounts for a staggering 35% of the global share, nearly tripling that of the U.S. And who's following behind? Well, it's the U.S., Japan, Germany, India, and South Korea. Just pause and think about that lineup for a second. Out of these, only three are what we've traditionally viewed as industrial powerhouses. Now, China stands alone as the world's manufacturing giant. This isn't just about quantity, it's about strategic industries. Take electric vehicles, for example. China's pushing boundaries and setting benchmarks that the rest of the world is scrambling to meet. 
And it's not stopping there. China's influence stretches across the critical minerals marketplace too. Those essential ingredients that power everything from your smartphone to the batteries in those very same EVs. China leads the world in the production of 29 commodities including 22 metals and 7 industrial minerals. These aren't just any commodities. They are the building blocks of modern technology. These implications are enormous, especially as the world shifts towards sustainable technologies like solar energy, another field where China is already a global leader. So what does this mean for the US? It's clear, China is positioning itself as a global manufacturing hub and a leader in the next wave of technological advancements. This poses a real challenge to US economic dominance, especially in sectors that will define the future of global industry. The looming threat of World War III. Uh, World War III takes place. What do you think are the chances of this taking place? Ray Dalio says 50%. Yes, he okay. does. A, um, Jamie Dimon says this is the most dangerous, ti dangerous times we've had in America in decades. Okay, cool. So if World War III happens, what happens to the economy? Who's going to be the parties involved? Are we going to be involved purely through proxy or is there going to be attack here? Then you write down the possibilities. When you look at the global stage right now, it feels like a powder keg just waiting to blow. Tensions are already boiling over. Take the Israel-Gaza conflict, for example, or the recent Iranian attack on Israel, not to mention the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war that has dragged much of the world into its vortex in one way or another. For the US, this is particularly troubling. The U.S. economy is deeply intertwined with global markets. A major conflict could disrupt international trade routes, leading to scarcity of critical resources and spike prices. Remember the oil crisis in the past? Yeah, that kind of impact, but potentially on a larger scale. What's more concerning is that the U.S. military spending could skyrocket, diverting funds from domestic needs like infrastructure, healthcare, and education. More money into defense means less for everything else. And in an economy already bracing for potential recessions, this could be the tipping point. Now, you might be wondering if there's any way you can survive this recession, or in the worst case scenario, a market crash. Well, one of the answers might be cryptocurrency. Is crypto your lifesaver? Now, with all this doom and gloom about economic instability and geopolitical tensions, you might be wondering, is there a safety net? Well, some experts believe that cryptocurrencies might just be that lifesaver we're all looking for. Here's why. Traditional markets have their perks, but they're not immune to crashes or inflation. Just think back to the 2008 financial crisis or even the recent swings during the pandemic. Crypto, on the other hand, operates on a different playbook. It's decentralized, which means it isn't tied down by any one country's economic policies or failures. That's a big plus when things get shaky on the global stage. Now, I'm not saying it's all sunshine and rainbows. Crypto markets can be wildly volatile. But here's something interesting. During times of high inflation or when traditional economies are swaying on the edge of a recession, cryptocurrencies have shown some resilience. They're seen by many as a hedge against inflation. Why? Because unlike traditional money like the US dollar, there's a cap on cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. There can only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence, no more. That scarcity can make crypto a more stable store of value when traditional currencies are losing their purchasing power pretty fast. If the dollar starts to falter or if stock markets plunge, having some of your assets in crypto might just help you keep your financial boat afloat. Just remember, like any investment, it's all about not putting all your eggs in one basket. While crypto can be a lifesaver, it's a vast and complex market. Please do your research before investing in crypto and measure the pros and cons before diving in. The best strategy is to diversify your assets and keep yourself on the safer side. Now, if you're still very interested in crypto, why not check out our next video on how to buy the top six Solana meme coins in 2024. Before moving on to our next video, please give this one a thumbs up and get the conversation going in the comment section below. We will be back with another video soon.